progress. Greetings, everybody. So we are continuing our videos on cause-based image encryption, and the topic of today's video is pixel correlation analysis. So let's begin. Let me remind everybody that we are talking about symmetric chaotic encryption, which means that we have a chaotic system uh, as a source of randomness in the transmitter. We take some information, any type of data, but let's say it's an image. We encrypt this information. We can safely transmit it through the public channel and back at the receiver end, we are using the exact same chaotic source, using the exact same keys, meaning the same initial conditions and parameter values, to reconstruct the original information back. Okay, so reverse the encryption process. Okay, and the most common uh, processes that we consider is uh, shuffling of the image pixels. Okay, pretty much like shuffling a deck of cards and substitution of the pixel values. So we take each individual pixel and replace its value with another value. So after we perform chaotic encryption, we have a series of statistical tests to test the image. Okay, and one of the most important ones is pixel correlation. Okay. So what is correlation? Uh, it can be considered uh, as for any type of time series in general. So it's a statistical measure and it tells us how similar are two different uh, time series. Okay. So for example, for image, it can tell us uh, how similar are uh, two adjacent pixels, for example. Okay. Uh, for example, similar rows, adjacent rows or adjacent columns, you know. Uh, so it is uh, it has, correlation has a value from minus one to one. Actually, if it close if it is close to zero, it means that the two time series, in this case, two series of adjacent pixels, is not correlated. So the desired result should be close to zero for an encrypted image. Why? Uh, for highly correlated uh, time series or adjacent pixels in an original plain text image, the value is usually close to one, meaning that uh, the uh, pixels change value in a kind of the same manner uh, as uh, we progress towards the pixels of the image, okay? Of course, if the value is close to minus one, it means that the two time series are negatively correlated. So one might think here, okay, why the hell uh, should an image have high or low correlation? What does it really tell us? Well, think about it, okay? Uh, let's say we take a photo of an image of, of you know, some plane outside, so like some green field with some random, very nice blue sky. So even if it is a color image or a grayscale image, if you think about it naturally, let's say I take this photo of like a plane and the sky, well, the pixels representing the sky obviously have very close values because the color of the sky is really all around relatively the same. Okay, so in an original image, pixels that are very close by are going to have very high correlation, which indicates the fact that they have very close values or they variate, you know, from low and uh, high values uh, in the gray scale relatively in the same way. Okay, so that's what will happen naturally in an original image. And we usually test that for vertical adjacent pixels, as you see right here, horizontal adjacent pixels, and we also test it in diagonal adjacent pixels. Okay, and some recent papers actually do it in the, uh, you know, in the anti-diagonal as well. So this is what will happen in a plain text image. Okay, but ideally, after we encrypt this image, since uh, in an encrypted image adjacent pixels should have no relation to each other, especially since encryption must hide any previous relation that they had, the correlation should be very close to zero. Okay, and see what happens here. I have. Uh, the correlation graphs uh, for uh, adjacent diagonal uh, pixels for the original shuffled image and encrypted image. And you see that uh, in the plain text image, the correlations for uh, diagonal adjacent pixels, so at position x, y, and x plus 1, y plus 1, are very close to each other. And this is indicated by the fact but by that this you know, scatter plot has values very close to the diagonal, meaning that the adjacent pixels has very close values to each other, okay? This is, of course, significantly broken in the shuffled image because, as you see, uh, immediately since I shuffle the pixels of the image, pretty much like shuffling the deck of cards, immediately the correlation between adjacent ones is broken, right? So naturally, as you see, uh, the values scatter all, all around uh, the potential values from 0 to not 255, but 200 around uh, because we haven't encrypted the image yet, okay? So you can see some small patterns appearing here, but 
initially this is a good result, okay? But it's not a complete result because as you know, we also discussed it earlier, we, know, we don't only need shuffling of the pixels, we also need substitution of the pixels. So after performing exclusive or here and obtaining the original encrypted image, you can see that any relation between adjust and diagonal pixels is completely broken, right? So the adjustment values are scattered all around from zero to 255. And this is the desired result that we should have in an encrypted image, right? So this is what uh, we should always aim for. And this is what the result of encryption should be. Here I test uh, adjacent diagonal pixels, but if you consider vertical adjacency or horizontal adjacency, you are gonna get the same result. Okay, I just print only one. And you can see the results of the correlation, uh, which I also computed mathematically. For the original image, uh, for all three cases, the correlation is very close to one. For the shuffled image, it significantly drops almost close to zero, but for the encrypted, it's pretty much uh, very, very close to zero. I mean, 10 to the minus three error here. Okay, so we are very close to zero correlation for the encrypted image. And this is the desired result. Okay. So what do we do if we have a color image, an RGB image? Obviously, we do the same thing. Okay. So ideally, all three channels should separately have zero correlation for horizontal, diagonal, and vertical pixels, okay? And of course, uh, in the method we apply here, we have that result. So I'm just uh, printing the result for the diagonal pixels, uh, the diagonal adjacent pixels for red, green, and blue channels. Of course, as you see in the encrypted case, uh, the dispersed information, you know, uh, is, I'm sorry, the information is completely dispersed, and so adjacent pixels have no relation to one another, okay? So this is the desired result for all three channels, of course. Okay, and again, if we plot the correlations, uh, if we compute the correlations for all three cases and all three channels for the encrypted one, for the R, G, and B channels, always uh, is very, very close to zero. Okay, so this is the desired result. And if you're trying to perform encryption yourself, this is the result that you should take after encrypting your uh, image information. Okay, so uh, thank you very much. And I will see you uh, on our next video.